<laughs> Did they reorganize all of the aisles again? <sighs> Where would their kitsune section be now? I swear to God, if I have to be stuck with the horse memes for another week, I'm gonna. <laughs> Crazy seeing you here. You're probably wondering who the hell is that deranged rapid girl blasting up the foot care section. Promise to be my meat shield and I'll tell you all I know about this rabid maniac. Pipkin Pippa is the embodiment of she's just like me for real, and by just like me, I mean your average basement dwelling keyboard warrior. Pippa is a female English virtual YouTuber and a member of FaceConnect. She debuted as part of its first generation alongside Rinku Ashilia, Hakushika Iori, Tenma Maemi, Fujikura Uruka, Shizui Mishiru, and Utatane Naza. She's kind of like a female, more hyperactive version of Asmongold. After all, they both drink way too much soda and repurpose entirely harmless part of their households for quite unsavory uses. And no more vomit drawer. Wait, what do you mean no more? No more. Like, I, I haven't had mold in here for a while. No, 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 the other thing. Oh, I haven't had a vomit drawer in like over two years now. <sighs> Listen, now I grab now I grab the the, the trash can no. out of the bathroom like a normal person. Why did you keep a drawer? <laughs> well, because I needed something that I could like lay my head into uh, in case I got sick in the middle of the night. And you were like a kid when you did this? Oh no god! In a world filled with carefully curated personas, Pippa's unabashedly degenerate antics deeply resonate with her audience. Oh, oh fuck, you guys said a bunch of them! Holy shit! Attracting a devoted cult following, her genuine and unfiltered opinions, regardless of the potential for pushback or controversy, have struck a deep chord with her loyal fanbase. As deranged as Pippa comes off, she is still very relatable and stands as a refreshing anomaly in the VTuber scene. From reacting to wacky stories to fortune reading ASMR, I want Pippa to lick our souls clean of my seed after the act is done. Pippa has endless hours of content ready to destroy you mentally. Pippa, sometimes dubbed Walmart Pecora, is a good case study of what happens when the creator is more degenerate than the audience. But naturally, straddling the fine line between edgy humor and shock value can stir debates, leading to polarized opinions about her. This divide is stark, with individuals either adoring her unique charm or finding her approach very off-putting. Before Pippa's debut, she released these videos as teasers showcasing her personality. Three of her notable videos include VTubers are PSYOP, where she claims that VTubers were part of a government PSYOP to ensure that humans wouldn't breed. PPPP and a clean version of Ram Ranch. 18 happy friends at a slumber party. Big fat fluffy pillows wanting to be hugged. A classic. Pippa initially dreamt of joining Hololive. I'm, in a way, glad she got rejected because if she did join Hololive, there is no way we would have ever got the Pippa that we know today. She finally made her long awaited debut on June 20, 2021. In that stream, she explained that she's actually three, that she likes tabletop RPGs, and if you are a DD &D lover like Pippa, do you know what else you might like? This book called the Tome of Phalor. It's a beautiful, comprehensive guide to the realm of fairies. Think of it like the fairy equivalent of the Monster Manual, but with less chomping and way more sparkles. This book is so useful for world building with minimal rules, meaning even I could use it without messing up the campaign in the first five minutes. It works with loads of RPG system like Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, and it's fantastic inspiration 
for readers and writers too. In the Tome of Faelor, dive into the mystical world of fairies with the latest book from Fable Spinners. Enhance your stories with incredible descriptions of fey realms, beautiful imagery, quirky characters, and mysterious powers such as the all-powerful Archray that rules over fairies. And speaking of powerful creatures, I know you guys love horses and the Tome of Faelor has this mythical upgrade, the Unicorn. It's way less clingy than those online parasocial unicorn fans, am I right? This book is perfect for RPG lovers, fantasy writers, and anyone who secretly believes in fairies. No judgment. Remember, the hardcore version, the fancy one, is a Kickstarter exclusive and the campaign ends in March, so make sure you don't miss it. Thank you, Toma Faelor, for sponsoring this video. Now back to the main content, which is probably less magical, although it's very pastel. But hey, at least I won't have glitter in my hair for the next six months. During her debut, Pippa also stated that she likes power cords, playing video games, and she loves chips. On the other hand, she hates technical difficulties, lag, bufferings, and crowds, but most of all, she hates the federal government. I'm not a big fan of the government. 30 on 30. I'm not a big fan of the government. 30 on 30. I'm not a big fan of the government. If you hadn't noticed already, Pippa is what we call a conspiracy theorist. She kind of tried to be more seso and clean in the first few weeks of her debut. Chat, chat, do you want to kiss? You want to kiss? Winding up. It lasted a total of like two streams and she slowly evolved into what she is today, the Yabbit menace and force of chaos. Pippa loves corrupting everyone she collaborates with her conspiracy theories and odd internet facts. The same goes for when she collabs with Kirsha. Collaborations between Pippa and her are consistently remarkable because of their amazing synergy. I believe collabs have the potential to be much more than just combining view counts. If the creators really click, it makes for content that grabs attention in ways they couldn't do by themselves. So just combining two big fan bases might not even bring the best results at time. This really showcases how it's all about that connections in those collabs, which can spark amazing content. And this goes for creators big and small. I'm sorry, what? It's, it's a black it? squirrel. Oh. What? Why can't you just say, okay. She's got to specify that it's melanated for when she attacks it. <laughs> the thing is, Pippa often describes herself as being quite pessimistic about the world and herself, but not when it comes to VTubing. Regarding VTubing, she harbors an incredible passion. And when she begins discussing them, you can tell she sees them as a positive driving force and source of inspiration and that she is quite knowledgeable about the topic as well as being full of great advices. And you cannot be them, but you can be you. This is so corny. <laughs> this is so corny, but you can be you and you can be one of those like super cool people. You can be super talented and super amazing and it might take you longer to get to that point and it's really upsetting sometimes you gotta let go of your ego though but just keep at it and then you'll hit whatever fucking age you hit 40 and suddenly you're you're fucking leonardo da vinci and your fucking drawings and your inventions and whatever the hell you know so it would make sense for pippa to found her own vtuber idol agency in one instance, she even started a meme idol agency called Flavor. Flavor is a meme corporation set up by Pippa with the help of AI. It's meant as a parody of the state of VTubing and corporate culture. In this setup, Pippa is portrayed as a failed evil corporate CEO who got fired from her previous company called Kuro Company after one of her former talents revealed Pippa was using her powers to force sexual favors from the talents. Given that the entire project is open source, Pippa's fans begin to contribute, leading to a surge of content for her community to engage with. It became a creative sandbox for everyone involved. This initiative led to five generations of VTuber models which were adopted and operated by her fans emerging from this agency.
Galaxy. They even created Twitter accounts for each and every single model. Made up lores also emerged from this parody agency, including fake Discord logs that were leaked and even, yes, fake VTuber drama, leading to one of their affiliated talents having to issue an apology on social media. Initially, it was all fun and games, but eventually, she kind of lost control of it as it took a life on its own. Her co-workers began to get annoyed with some of the interactions with her fanbase, and even the CEO of FaceConnect, Sakana, started sweating a little bit, I'm sure. Everyone was wondering how much she was actually responsible for what the flavor talents were doing. So, like, do you do you actually like run these accounts or something? Like, well, none of them. I don't own any of these. None of them. I have no part in this. All I did, I made this logo. With Chat's help, I generated I, I generated the images. That's it. I have not made any of these accounts. So eventually she had to distance herself from it. And that's kind of the downside of having an edgy fanbase. The positive aspects is that you're extremely hard to cancel because most things will fly with them. The downside is that they're kind of hard to control. And if you ever want to go more seso in the long run or want to change your content, they might revolt. In another hilarious antic created by her fanbase, the Pipakistan fan Twitter account was created. This is a roleplay account where each day the value of the fictional Pippa currency called the bun is adjusted up or down in response to Pippa's later stream or social media antics. Basically, Pippa has her own bank and on that topic, what the fuck are you guys doing? Where is my bank? How am I supposed to rule the world like this? But one of the bigger controversies Pippa was involved in and one that helped her put her on the map is the Hogwarts Legacy scandal. Hogwarts Legacy is a game that came out on February 10, 2023 and is an action role-playing game set in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Seems pretty innocent, right? Well, the plot twist is that its author, JK Rowling, has been making quite a lot of disparaging political comments about transgenders and trans rights on social media. And despite not being directly involved in the game's development or its narrative creation, Rowling profits from the game due to her ownership of the Harry Potter intellectual property or IP. This ownership means that any content produced within the Harry Potter universe, including Hogwarts Legacy, generates royalties for her. This, of course, developed into a large-scale protest and boycott against all streamers that wanted to play Hogwarts Legacy, regardless of their political views, which resulted into a mass harassment campaign of several content creators. A list was even created to keep track of who was playing the game at the time, creating a huge divide within the community as the members of this list eventually became prime targets targets of harassment. The biggest examples of these was the targeted harassment of VTubers such as Silvervale and Pikimi. The conversation culminated in mass cyberbullying and lots of attempts at cloud chasing from several smaller VTubers who seized the opportunity to promote their own platforms as a safe space unlike the platforms of those who chose to play the wizard game. At the time, this minority of really loud outspoken voices created a false consensus of unanimity in opinions. Most were too scared to speak out or give a more nuanced take on the topic for fear of losing their platforms or even being publicly harassed. So this led to the harassment, doxing and bullying of Silvervale especially, who broke down on stream several times and even saw some of her relationships with her co-workers sour. We, we all understand your feelings and and you know I, I hope you enjoyed your time here while you were here and it's okay if you don't want to be here anymore but harassing people because they played a video game is not how you go about proper activism and try to make legitimate changes <laughs> But the worst part of the whole thing is that the harassment also resulted in the departure of the VTuber Pikimi, who was widely loved and known for her impeccable behavior. And that's when Pippa steps in. I think Silvermail just got harassed over it. 
I think I think some people just started fucking harassing Silverbell from B Shoujo because she's playing it. They harassed Pikami. Yeah, they harassed Pikami. Poor Pikami, she didn't deserve it. She did not deserve it. People fucking suck. Don't get political in here, man. Don't get political. Just, man. Okay, I'm gonna get political. Okay, I just think it's hypocritical to lose your fucking mind about the Harry Potter shit. And then to go and play like Genshin Impact or fucking Blizzard games. Alright, I'm just saying. I could sympathize if it was like... Like, people were consistent with it, right? But they're, it's it's not consistent. It's not fucking consistent, okay? It's not consistent. Upon learning of Pikami's graduation, Pippa took the day off from streaming and returned the next day with a Hogwarts Legacy stream, despite her proclaimed dislike for Harry Potter. This was Pippa's way to stand against the Twitter outrage mob. Today's stream! I hate this franchise, but I hate people on Twitter more! The situation led to significant backlash, prompting a noticeable shift in public's opinion. The contentious nature of the issue brought about a strong reaction from those previously silent or neutral, revealing the broader spectrum of viewpoints and sparking more intense debate on the matter. And while it is true that some political agitators might have partaked in this movement, most people just wanted to play a game they loved. The problem is that these people attack such a wide brush of people, it's like saying all Pokemon fans are transphobic. Most people didn't have any political stake in this, they just wanted to play a franchise they grew up with. Nonetheless, this event ended up catapulting Pippa to higher heights as she got lots of people talking about her for better or for worse. Many criticized her takes, and among her biggest critic is a prominent political left-wing YouTuber called Vosh. Vosh likes to pick fights online a lot. But I stand by it. My moral principles are rock solid. In hindsight, this would end up being a really poor choices of words for Vosh. So Vosh decided to pick a fight with Pippa based on internet threads meant to display her in a bad light that we'll cover later in the video. Pippa? Who I think is like a Nazi? The problem with Vosh is that he didn't expect this bunny anime girl to end up pulling some deep lore on him and absolutely cooked him. Let's just say Vosh has a history of taking clopping a little too far. Did you hear about what Vosh said about you? Yeah, I think he said I'm a Nazi. I'm not really concerned if a horse fucker thinks I'm a Nazi though. Pippa was even more right there than she thought at the time. See, Vosh has been vocal in critiquing the VTuber community, alleging that it harbors individuals with pedophilic tendencies and even an overemphasis on lolly content. A large portion of VTubers are degenerate 4chan incel p and he's also the same guy who's recently come under fire for accidentally opening his non-sorted folder, which revealed a bunch of very young looking girls in promiscuous positions with none other than horses. This is an example of the kind of structure that I'm referring to. I don't know what's worse here, that he's a mega hypocrite, that there is literal horses mixed in his prawn folder, or that all of this is right next to his stax folder. Knowing now that that artist is a lolicon, yeah, I can see it. When I looked at it, I think the vibe that I got was like short stack thick kind of thing, you know what I mean? Uh, like the way uh, like goblins get drawn in porn. I want to emphasize that even during the intense discussions surrounding Hogwarts legacy and trans issues, Pippa consistently called for the respect of individuals' identities. She's issued a tweet. Notice, it's nice to meet you all. It's been a hectic past few days and I'm not sure how to word this properly. While I do appreciate all of the kind messages, I don't appreciate being used as an excuse to attack other people. Let's not shit fling and attack other people's identities. If I see it, I'll be blocking and banning you from my community like I do the rest of the trolls and bullies. Do not try to misinterpret my words and use me as a banner to attack other people. Pippa. Although it sparked considerable backlash, I believe was essential in defining her community's boundaries firmly. This step was crucial to communicate what is and isn't acceptable behavior within her community, showing her dedication to creating a respectful space despite what most of her aunties would want you to believe. On a lighter note, the next day of Pippa's Hogwarts stream was her birthday, and her fan Mr. Yura organized a birthday billboard ad for her which is pretty cool. Being a controversial figure has its perks and downsides. One of the downsides being that you're prone to attacks from outside sources such as hacks, 
doxes as well as being mass reported. In one of those instances, Pippa's Twitter account got banned for a single day. I got Twitter banned last night and now I can't send tweets from my phone anymore. On December 28th, Pippa also got her Discord banned as well for unknown reasons. Pippa, what did you do? It's fine, it's fine. Too much bed posting, it's fine. Don't worry about it. My Discord's gone? Guess I don't have to respond to DMs. <laughs> Luckily, she regained access back to her account on January 8th. Please, Discord support. You said I have 14 days to resolve my account issue or you close my account. But you won't respond to any tickets. My Discord is back. I will never say anything bad about Discord again! Pippa was also embroiled in a fake doxing attempt. Basically what happened is that a YouTuber by the name of Camelot331 posted an IRL picture alluding that it was Pippa. Pippa then responded to the tweet confirming that this was not her and added that this could cause privacy issues for VTubers and legal issues for VTubers and corporations. Jesus Christ, this not me. Please don't post things like this about VTubers. It creates privacy issues, and for people in a company, it could create legal issues. Camelot then apologized on Twitter for the trouble he had caused, stating, People obviously saw the picture I posted yesterday. Had I known the VTuber culture, I wouldn't have posted. A friend was hurt over it, something I would never want to happen. Even more were hurt. It was a joke. Sorry to Pip. Good lesson learned. Apologies. Yours truly, C331. Upon Pippa's tweet, internet detectives delved into the message, highlighting capital letters scattered within the text to unveil a hidden phrase. Phase is gay. This revelation led many to interpret it as either a lack of remorse or an act of trolling. Speculations arose that this cryptic message might have been a response to Pippa's previous jest, referring to him as a fruit during a collaborative podcast. Oh my oh yeah. That's what I want to see immediately. Do you think it's your fault for looking a little too fruity, maybe? <sighs> Why you gotta say that? But the biggest accusation Pippa has received is being called a Nazi and an anti-Semit. This is a common trend in VTuber spaces to throw that word around. People also believed Gargora was a Nazi at one point, which I speak about in my Gora video. In one instance, Pippa joked about shekels, which is an Israeli currency, often referenced in Jewish conspiracy theories or anti-Semitic tropes. Hi, thank you for the 937. Thanks for the stream, Pips. Have my shekel. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the... I'm rubbing my hands. Thank you for the shekels. What the fuck? I don't know. Whatever. Thank you, guys. And then they also accused her of doing racist jokes. Oh, man. Imagine he'd start... Imagine his opening line was like, I'll take your breath away. Which was... Well, that's Pippa. Sometimes I say stupid shit. I'm gonna fucking shoot up a Walmart! Sometimes I say stuff and I don't believe it. But I believe it while I'm saying it. And then five seconds later, I'm like, that was the stupidest thing I've ever said. Why did I say that? During a gameplay session of Hogwarts Legacy, some viewers interpreted the player's negative comments about goblins as being anti-Semitic as well. That thing's fucking it ugly. Ooh. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> you know what? I think it's okay we're killing these things. They're pretty fucking ugly. I think we should genocide them. This confusion may stem from prejudiced stereotypes about Jewish people, leading to a mistaken belief that the criticisms of goblin characters were indirectly targeting Jewish individuals. Allegations that people then took the time to clarify during the stream. I just want to say, people thought that I was being anti-Semitic, shitting on the goblins. The goblins have fucking black sclera and like l wrinkly, gross little faces and long ears and shit. Bro, the guy, the, the, no! That's not a dog whistle, dude! They, they're goblins! They're creepy looking! Pippa also has been accused of denying the Holocaust, when in fact this clip only shows her reading a really messed up super chat. Thank you for the 333. I think Helen was mostly legit but not as capable as she's made out to be. Like how that one event happened but 6 million? No way. Wait a minute. <laughs> Same with 
with this clip where she is going fully into her conspiracy theorist trope. But K Angel, what if I told you it's already like that? What if I told you that there's already a group of people running the world right now and they have been for hundreds of years? They're even trying to reduce the world population to one billion or sell some conspiracy theorists say. What if I told you, K Angel, that it's not about the population number? It's about who is left. These are just few minutes out of thousands of hours of streaming. This isn't Pippa's main content. She usually focuses on creating uplifting projects, offering advices to VTubers, and producing entertaining content for her fans. These are just essentially edgy jokes, but joking about sensitive topics doesn't require you to endorse these subjects. And if you don't believe me, just hear it from Pippa herself. Sometimes I say stupid <gasps> shit, but I don't mean it. Or sometimes I say stupid <gasps> shit, and a year later, shocking, I know, but people change in a year. I don't believe it anymore. Or sometimes I still agree with it, but I didn't mean it the I didn't mean to word it the way that I did. I'm not gonna apologize, but I wish you wouldn't hate me so much. I would have worded it more nicely if I had known you were gonna hone in on it. Pippa is often accused of being part of the alt-right movements, which has been associated with anti-Semitism. These antis often dig up clips of Pippa where she presumably manipulated co-workers into thinking that the Joshua Moon site is a good place. Mm. They've talked about us a bit though, and, and they've, been, they've been really friendly. There you go, Kiwi Rolls. It sounds just called you delicious. Uh, yes, this video is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Josh, oh no, what's going on? Sorry. Crazy to think anyone would call Tenma innocent. The website owner addressed Pippa's comments and her positive reaction to his response sparked additional controversy. This sequence of events further intensified the debate surrounding her actions and statements. Did you say Noel's reaction to you? What the hell? No? <laughs> what do you say? What the fuck is this pet anime shit? <laughs> he said, why are we doing screaming right now? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. You said he wanted to become a VTuber. No? Well, help him out, Chad. Help him out, man. There's also been several threads made on Pippa where she is also accused of supporting and encouraging interactions with lolcows and alt-right Gamergates figures. The controversy surrounding Pippa involves clips that, when viewed without context, appear quite incriminating. However, it's important to note that these clips were often deliberately taken out of context. The background and timing of these accusations are crucial for understanding the full picture. The allegations originated from a user involved in the hashtag Drop Kiwi Farm movement led by Kefals, a controversial figure who had her own movement turn against her after she was accused of embezzling hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's obviously a lot more to be said about Kefals, but she's not a VTuber, so honestly, who cares? All you need to know is that this movement, which initially aimed to boycott this particular website, eventually morphed into a widespread hate campaign. Its main objective shifted towards opposing anything associated with Kiwi Farms. This campaign scrutinized anyone with even the slightest connection to the website, including those who referenced it in memes, jokes, or even casual mentions. Consequently, Pippa found herself targeted during this period, caught in the crossfire of the movement's broader agenda to combat the website's influence and activities. The problem is that a user or someone such as Vosh, who now stumbles onto these threads and who doesn't understand the context of the time and space where these were written, will only take these words at face value. Pippa, who I think is like a Nazi? And this is why she has been a heated topic amongst VTuber audiences in the past couple of years. But hopefully this helped shed a light on some of the misconceptions about her. Listen, if I ever secure that Vosh collab... <laughs> <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna ask him to see his barn? <laughs> it's just polite. Thing is with Pippa, it really shows how a VTuber can embrace the whole 4chan slash 
anonymous forums slash rats and how we can engage with these communities without necessarily have them define us. There is a lot of great content that can come out of mixing communities like this. And she is not just your edgy, epic, rabid VTuber, but a complex character capable of fitting both in the shitposting world and the glossy idol corporate VTuber scene. The fascinating thing with her is how she's managed to thread the line of controversy, often even crossing it sometimes to the despair of her boss Fishman. She definitely likes to keep everyone on their toes, but she still managed becoming virtually uncancelable even through the really controversial shit she says. I guess that's the perks of always being really honest about who you are to your audience. They'll accept you for who you are. It makes it even more remarkable that she works for a company that allows her to do this. Sakana intentionally recruits controversial talents, but still aims to be seen as a legitimate idol company. So she definitely had to become a bit more tame since joining. And that's probably for the best. There is only a certain degree of honesty the internet can tolerate until it creates much more hassle than it's worth it. Not gonna lie, I was familiar with Pippa before this video, but I hadn't dove that deep into her content. After researching her, I can irrevocably say that I'm kind of a fan now. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of based. I always like to see someone who is unabashedly themselves. But what do you guys think of her? Let me know in the comments below. Pippa is often accused of being part of the alt-right movements, which has been associated with anti-Semitism. Semitism. 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 Okay, I think that's how it is. Pippa is often accused of being part of the 